Hey historians, Mr. Birch here and welcome to 8th grade social studies test practice questions. Today we're going to be talking about black codes. When you see the question, press pause, take a moment to read and answer the question, then press play and we'll go over it together. Let's get started. After the Civil War, southern states adopted black codes to blank. What is the question asking? Okay, basically it's asking is saying southern states adopted black codes, but what were they to do to, to do what? So what's the question? What what were the black codes for? Um, some of the possible answers, punish plantation owners for the use of slavery, support radical reconstruction objectives in the South, promote the activities of the Freedmen's Bureau, limit the impact of the 13th Amendment. So what can I eliminate here? So it says southern states adopted these black codes not northern states, so we know that the southern states were the slave-holding states, a lot more um, issues in terms of probably racial divide and a lot more blacks in the area. So though they fought in the Civil War to win the right to, or to keep the right to have slaves and to separate themselves from the rest of the United States, they lost that war. So it doesn't mean that instantly they wanted to give up their slave-holding um, rights, but they had to. Um, so I think the idea of punishing plantation owners for the use of slavery is not something I would see that these people who were plantation owning slaveholders until the Civil War, I don't think they would want to do that. That just doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Support radical reconstruction objectives in the South. Reconstruction is the act of changing and reinstituting and reorganizing the Southern states to be to succeed and be part of the union once again after the civil war the radical reconstruction would be the idea that they would radically change what was going on in the south most people never want to radically change their way of life so the idea that the southern states would adopt radical reconstruction doesn't make sense either so what do we need to know black codes is the name given to the laws enacted by southern states in 1865 and 1866 immediately after the end of the Civil War. These laws were intended to exploit and remove the rights from newly freed blacks, or freedmen is what they were called. So these laws were terribly racist and terribly un-American, but they were intended to basically keep these men and women who were once slaves and now technically they were free. They were trying to keep them in a type of slavery system that was still somehow legal. The laws range from various forms of forced labor called apprenticeship maybe, but not technically slavery, um, to fines for them being out in public, to disallow blacks from owning businesses or lands or even participating on a jury. Um, so the right answer here is limit the impact of the 13th Amendment. Maybe you didn't know what the 13th Amendment was going into this question, even without knowing that. The other answers just don't make sense for what would probably be a black code in the southern states enacted by the southern states, right? Um, promote the activities of the Freedmen's Bureau. The Freedmen's Bureau was an organization to support the freedom and the free men and women that were formerly slaves. Doesn't make sense that the southern states would be doing that. So let's talk a little bit about the 13th Amendment and black codes. The 13th Amendment was enacted in 1865. Um, it stated that slavery was illegal throughout the United States, essentially, even in the former slave states. After the Civil War, many of the southern, um, for, I should say former slave states, enacted black codes, which were laws to limit the rights, abilities, freedoms, power, and opportunities of blacks along, the, along with furthering the power and gain of whites at the blacks' expense. It was, they were terrible laws. They were very racist, very unfair and cruel and just almost creatively cruel in their um, <clears throat> in what they did to the black people of the South. So here's a few very disturbing examples, and forgive me if you don't like some of the language here. It's not mine. It's actually uh, real examples of some of the black codes in the states. Um, the first one says, No Negro shall be permitted to preach, exhort, or otherwise declaim, declare, to congregations of colored people without a special permission in writing from the president of the police jury. Every Negro is required to be in the regular service of some white person. That sounds a lot like slavery, doesn't it? Or former owner 
who shall be held responsible for the conduct for the conduct of said Negro, but said employer or former owner may permit said said Negro to hire his own time by special permission in writing, which permission shall not extend over seven days at any time. So basically it's saying that every black person shall be under the direct authority of a white person, and they're only allowed to do things if it's permitted in writing by that white person, which sounds a lot like slavery, right? And then the last one, servants shall not be absent from the premises without the permission of the master. Again, master doesn't sound like something a free person would have. So these black codes were very much in opposition to the idea of freedom in the South. And they were enacted even after these southern states were, um, you know, post-Civil War when um, black people in the South were technically considered free. Uh, these laws, by the way, and eventually led to what we call the Jim Crow laws or the Jim Crow movement in the South, which was a little bit more passive version of, version of this that went on for a hundred years thereafter into the 60s. Um, <clears throat> but we'll talk about that at another time.